Who knew? It says American Bank Note Company right there on our birth certificates. I'm connecting so many dots today I think my head might start spinning around and puking green vomit, like the little girl in The Exorcist. Okay I'm sorry, that's gross. But that's how disturbing this stuff is. This type of awareness should not leave the reader feeling powerless, but empowered. The reason this has gone on for so long is a direct result of our collective ignorance. I realize this stuff is not easy to believe and even harder to understand, especially to the newly awakened, and even more so to the still asleep. This is a quote I forced myself to memorize for this very reason. A truth's initial commotion is directly proportional to how deeply the lie was believed. It wasn't the world being round that agitated people but that the world wasn't flat. When a well-packaged web of lies has been sold gradually to the masses over generations, the truth will seem utterly preposterous and its speaker a raving lunatic. Dresden James when the United States declared bankruptcy, pledged all Americans as collateral against the national debt, and confiscated all gold, eliminating the means by which you could pay, it also assumed legal responsibility for providing a new way for you to pay, and it did that by providing what is known as the exemption an exemption from having to pay for anything. In practical terms, though, this man giving each American something to pay with, and that something is your credit. Your value to society was then, and still is calculated using actuarial tables and at birth, bonds equal to this average value are created. I understand that this is currently between one and two million dollars. These bonds are collateralized by your birth certificate, which becomes a negotiable instrument. The bonds are hypothecated, traded until their value is unlimited for all intents and purposes, and all that credit created is technically and rightfully yours. In point of fact, you should be able to go into any store in America and buy anything and everything in sight, telling the clerk to charge it to your exemption account, which is identified by a nine-digit number, that you will recognize as your social security number without the dashes. It is your EIN, which stands for Exemption Identification Number. Is it starting to make sense now? Why it's not too far-fetched to imagine the day when you will be able to walk confidently into your bank to legally, lawfully and ethically deposit some of your value into your account? Why should we not be able to cash out a few billion dollars that we have created, backed by our labor, only to be stolen from us by the very people who claim to represent our collective best interests. The whole concept of energy harvesting is starting to make a whole lot more sense now, isn't it? The birth certificate created a fiction the name of the baby in uppercase letters. The state province sells the birth certificate to the Commerce Department of the Corporations of USA, which in turn places a bond on the birth certificate thereby making it a negotiable instrument and placing the fiction called the STRAWMAN, into the warehouse of the corporations of USA representation for the created fiction was given to the Bar British Accredited Registry Regency, owned and operated by the Crown, for the purpose of contracting the fiction, which most of us think is ourselves into a third-party action. Do not underestimate the power behind this trick. It is to con us into contracting with the Feds, so that they can legally confiscate our property. All these contracts have only our signatures on them, because corporate fictions cannot contract only natural beings have the right to contract and the right not to contract. Because there is no full disclosure we are never told that we have just signed away what we believe to be our property these contracts are fraudulent, and hence, we are still the lawful owner and the profit earned by the feds from selling securities our property belongs to us, and must go into a fund for our benefit, otherwise it would be fraud. Not wanting to be charged with fraud, the feds had to create a remedy for us and hope we wouldn't discover it. For even a deeper understanding of the birth certificate registration process click here. The best example of the effects of registration is the birth certificate. A bankrupt entity city, state province, country cannot operate in commerce. So how do they manage? Since USA has been bankrupt for decades, Having no substance such as gold and silver to back it, the only asset it has are men and women in our labor. We are the collateral for the interest on the loan of the World Bank. Each of us is registered via the application for a birth certificate. 
The Treasury issues a bond on the birth certificate and the bond is sold at a securities exchange and bought by the Federal Reserve Bank, which then uses it as collateral to issue bank notes. The bond is held in trust for the feds of the Depository Trust Corporation. We are the surety on said bonds. Our labor energy is then payable at some future date. Hence we become the transmitting utility for the transmission of energy. The United States government, in order to provide necessary goods and services, created a commercial bond promissory note by pledging the property, labor, life and body of its citizens as payment for the debt bankruptcy. This commercial bond made chattel property out of us all. We became nothing more than human resources and collateral for the debt. This was without our knowledge and or our consent via the filing registration of our birth certificates. When mums apply for a birth certificate, the application is registered. The legal title of her baby is then transferred from mum to the state. Mum is left with equitable title of her baby, whom she can use for a fee or use tax, and since the property does not belong to her, she has to treat it in the manner which the owner wants. Prepaid proof all of your debt is prepaid. Your debt is prepaid. August 2nd. 2013 posted by Brian Kelly Reblog from Brian Kelly's blog I had a discussion with a friend the other day when I asked the question on Facebook if you found out your mortgage, car loan, student loan, credit card was fraudulent debt, would you keep paying it? I included a link to the post I put out about Key Bank waiving a $32 K loan. This was his response, if I borrow money from someone, I'm going to repay it. I don't care if it's the mafia, some made up big brother organization, or a bank. Stealing is stealing, regardless what you believe, two wrongs don't make a right. The problem with this response is that it's based on a backwards view, of what money and credit really is. What if everything we've ever been taught by the system, to believe about money and credit is an illusion? Well, it is. Many of those who will read this article already know that. Yet even those who do know, still can't quite wrap their heads around how the system works in actuality. Believe me, they do an extremely good job of keeping these truths very well hidden. This article does a phenomenal job at breaking it down in very simple, easy to understand terms. All of the facts presented are supported by hard data. Also included is an example of a response letter from an ET to a charge being disputed, whereas the disputing party requested funds be taken from their prepaid treasury account to settle the alleged debt. What is not shared by this blogger is the documentation submitted to a T, which I am working on trying to retrieve from him now. Before I get to the meat and potatoes of this brilliant article, here are a few facts to consider in the response to my friend on Facebook. A deposit created through lending is a debt that has to be paid on demand of the depositor, just the same as the debt arising from a customer's deposit of checks or currency in the bank. Of course they do not really pay out loans from the money they receive as deposits. If they did this, no additional money would be created. What they do when they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits to the borrower's transaction accounts. Federal Reserve Bank Chicago, Modern Money Mechanics, P6 banks are prohibited from lending their own money from their own assets, or from other depositors. So from where did the dollar come? The contract we signed our promissory note was converted into a negotiable instrument by the bank, and became an asset on the bank's accounting books. According to the UCC 1-201, 24 and 3104, it was our signature on a note which made a dollar. Our promissory note money was taken, recorded as an asset of the bank, and sold by the bank for cash without equal valuable consideration given to us for our note. The bank gave us a deposit slip, as a receipt for the money we gave them, just as the bank would normally provide when we make a deposit to the bank. It then created an account at the bank, which would contain this dollar which we just created. A check on this account was issued with our signature and this account is the source of funds behind the check, which we received as a loan. The bank risked none of its own assets in the so-called loan to us, rather it used our note to pay the seller, in order to raise an asset for itself, and also used the face value of our note, as principal, which it claims it lent us and against which it charged interest. 
consideration on the part of the bank is non-existent so the bank has nothing to lose. It cannot possibly sustain the loss. Since consideration is essential to an enforceable contract and the note was obtained from us via fraud, the entire transaction contract is fraudulent. Mortgage contracts are written in such a way to appear as if the bank lent us funds before they received our promissory note mortgage contract so that the bank can use it as a receipt which they can sell. The contract reads, for a loan I have received, but you haven't received it yet. So in fact, we signed and gave the mortgage contract note to the bank prior to their giving us the funds. So, the application for the loan created the funds it has our signature on it and the note with our signature covered the funds to repay the loan. Again, constructive fraud. Here is the link to the original article. On this blog there are also many other great posts to research. One point I do want to make is that this gentleman on many occasions suggests filing a UCC1 financing statement to reclaim rights to your strawman account. However, the UCC filings submitted by the One People's Public Trust have effectively taken care of this step for everyone on the planet. Therefore, it is no longer necessary for individuals to file their own. BK right now even though they have no legal right or claim or lien, the bankers hold the title to you through your birth certificate. You can regain control by simply filing a notice of lien against the birth certificate. Filing notices of lien is done every day. Banks regularly file notices of liens with the Department of Commerce to prove and establish their interest in all kinds of property homes, cars, tools, equipment. This is done very simply by contacting the Secretary of State or Department of Commerce and filing a UCC1 financing statement and listing the property as collateral on the statement. The same can be done with your birth certificate, which is your property. You and only you can file this notice of lien you, and only you can determine the value of the property. Since you are priceless in God's eyes the value of your UCC1 should be unlimited. In this case, the company is the government. Because you agree to work for the government, the company, for the rest of your life, the government company agree to pay all of the debt you incur in your lifetime. Is that a bit of a surprise to you? It should be. No one has told you or showed you how to use this information. In exchange for your birth certificate and your application for social security, which they used as collateral to reduce their debt with the bankers, the government company promised to pay your debts. You work on behalf of the US government as collateral on the national debt owed to the bankers. Whatever your debt, it's actually prepaid. That's right, your debt is prepaid with what is known as money of account. There is no real substance or money of exchange such as gold or silver, only accounting adjustments and set-offs. The US government agreed to do this for you with the passage of House Joint Resolution HJR 192 back in 1933 shortly after the national emergency and bank holiday declared by President Roosevelt. You're already signed up for this program from birth, it's just that no one told you about it until now. Like all good companies though, the US government offered to its worker bees insurance benefits. They offered insurance to us if we would fill out an SS5 form, also known as Application for Social Security Benefits. It's also the hook they used to get us to sign up as their collateral on the national debt. This all originated from the Shepherd Towners Maternity Act that was to help new mothers with the care of their children if the mother was unwed. This is why they ask for the maiden name of the mother on the application for live birth. All of us are considered to be bastard children with the government company, as our daddy the SS5 is really a power of attorney POA for the company that issued the insurance benefit to you, the real man or woman. POA was assumed by the company, the government. When they established the new account they styled the name in all caps. Very few people normally sign their name in all caps. Your John H. Doe is really a corporation. Print your name in all caps if you intend to express the name title of your corporation. You'll find it on your driver's license, your social security card, your bank statement, your check blanks, your tax statements, etc.